Putting Reading First in Maine, Segment 10, Phonics Instructional Strategies. I-R-T-S. Yes, I-R-T-S. And how about on this one? I-R-T-S. Good for you. Phonics is one of the five essential elements of effective reading instruction. Phonics is a set of rules that specify the relationship between spoken sounds and written letters. Devin, what would pig be if I change the ending sound to n? Phonics instruction is most beneficial when it begins in kindergarten or first grade. Once children have a foundation in phonemic awareness, instruction in phonemic awareness and phonics are complementary. What are the instructional strategies that can be used for phonics? Let me take this word that we all know. Phonics instruction should be explicit and systematic. Let's all say it together. Ma. Ma. Yeah. And I'm going to just change the last letter and make a new word. Mop. That was really good, Duncan. I heard you stretching that whole word out. Okay? So In explicit phonics instruction, the teacher explains clearly and directly that certain letters or letter combinations represent certain sounds and how the substitution of one letter can create a different word. I hear you all saying it. Can you all say it? Can. Can. Right. So here's what we're learning. We're learning that we can take a word that we know and change it into a different word. And change it into a different word by changing the last letter. Teachers also clearly explain how to use this knowledge in reading and spelling. The teacher explains and models the concept, gives guided practice and feedback, and plans extended practice based on individual needs. Let's take the letters and make the first word. And tell us what word you started out with and what pin. word you changed it to. Say it again. Pin. And then I changed it to pin. When phonics instruction is systematic, the teacher utilizes a carefully selected sequence of letter-sound relationships rather than teaching letter-sound relationships randomly as students encounter them in stories and books. How many of you got that? Systematic instruction also includes ample reading and writing opportunities to practice using the letter-sound relationships that students are learning. Let's watch some examples of phonics instruction across the K through 3 grade span. As you watch, notice the explicit instructional approaches that the teachers use, including the ways in which they carefully explain letter-sound relationships and provide students with multiple opportunities to practice applying them to reading and writing. Letter-sound relationships. The following example demonstrates a kindergarten teacher explicitly teaching a group of students how the sounds of vowels can make it tricky when spelling simple words. We've been working on hearing the sounds in words. And if you can hear all of the sounds in a word, you can spell it. Yeah. Even the trickiest word in the but, world, but you can spell if you can hear, hear the sound. The yeah, so if you listen to the sounds. But I've been noticing that there are some sounds that are kind of tricky, that some people have been getting confused, and I get confused on them, too. One of those sounds is ah. I hear that sound, ah, and I get confused. And so you know what I like to do? I use our ABC chart to help me remember. And when I hear ah, I think ah, 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 apple. apple. And then I, easy for me to remember, that must be an A, isn't it? Now there's another sound that gets me confused. E. The eh sound. And I hear eh, and I always get confused what that is. So I say eh. Eh, 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 elephant. After the teacher's explicit introduction, notice how the students apply what they learned from the introduction to select the correct vowel sound for the word. All right, here's the first word I'd like you to try to spell on your paper, on your board. A chicken one. Listen for the sounds and try to spell the letters. Please write the word bat. That's fine. Uh, apple. Good job. You used the chart, didn't you, Catherine? Uh, I did. You remembered. Okay, now we're going to get a little bit harder. Are you ready? Here's the word. Pet. 
When a student experiences difficulty identifying the correct vowel, the teacher is available to give corrective feedback. The study of vowel sounds continues in a first grade classroom where the teacher conducts a lesson in which long and short vowel sounds are compared. After students read word cards in a pocket chart which focus on the long and short sounds of O and U, they are able to practice learning the difference between these sounds by playing a board game. Students roll the dice, read the word they landed on, and then identify whether the word has a long or short vowel sound. After the students are done playing the board game, the final step of this lesson is for students to decide which column in the pocket chart a new word belongs, based on the sound of the vowel in the word. Under the hot. Under the hot, because it's a... What kind of vowel? Long or short? Short. Short. Good job. I notice the TH there and the TH there. It's the breathy, it's the breezy one. In a third grade classroom, a teacher introduces the idea that some consonant and consonant clusters can make more than one sound. Notice how the teacher directs students to attend to how their mouths and throats feel when making the two different sounds. Now with the TH. This is when you're going to want to put your hands on your vocal cords as you say them. All right, Bailey, why don't you say that word for us? Try one more time. Um, uh, gather. 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 Good. And, and uh, this. Did everyone feel? Try those words. Gather, gather and gather. this. We wouldn't say gather. We would say gather. We wouldn't say this. We'd say this. The teacher then demonstrates how the different sounds of the consonant cluster can appear within words at different positions at the beginning, middle, or end. I see that C says the, the S sound. So I could put mine down and say cell because of that. The students' learning is extended as they play a crazy eights game using word cards with the target consonants and consonant clusters. All right, we're looking for the hard G, G that says G. Good. After the students are done playing the game, the teacher asks them to share words from the game which can be added to the chart of words created at the beginning of the lesson. All right, now chateau. Sounds like sh, as in machine. Okay, Abby. Chef. A chef. Okay, good. All right. All right, now you've heard me read this poem, and I'd like you to join. And we're going to be reading as a chorus. Okay, so I'm going to be reading softly because I want to hear um, your good reading. All right. So when I say go, we'll start with the title. Go. My wonderful dream. Last night I had the strangest dream that I... The teacher provides additional opportunities for the students to apply their new phonics knowledge by identifying words within a poem which represent the different sounds the consonants and consonant clusters make. And that he was the perfect guide. Okay. Hayden, would you pick out a word in the third stanza? China, what letters are we talking about? Sight words. Learning sight words can and should begin in kindergarten and continue throughout the grades. Teachers can utilize a wide variety of instructional techniques, including locating the word in text, then marking the word with highlight tape. Catch me, catch me if you can. can. Good job. Slide the classroom right can also use the word in sentences. So look what I've got. Here's the word can. Now let me think of a sentence with the word can in it. Hmm. My students can read. My class I want you to think of a sentence. Catherine, what's your sentence? I can go to the movie. Beautiful. Uh, what do you notice about the way it looks? <gasps> Alyssa. As a so Students might share what they notice the about the word. Really and it has three letters. Let's see what One helpful are. technique is to spell the word orally. Yeah, yeah. Class, how do you spell can? Can. Good. Put your hand down. Finally, the class can practice writing Ready? the word. Write it on the person's back. Here we go. C A N. What did we just spell? 
can. The purpose of this practice is to help children learn words so they can read them automatically and fluently in a variety of texts. We know how to spell can. I'm going to expect you, if you see this word in a book, you're not going to have to sound it out anymore. You're going to know what it is. And if you want to write this word, I don't want you trying to figure out how do I write can. You can look right up here on the word wall and know how to spell it. Where do you guys think we should put this? Under C. Hmm. Cole, why should we put it under C? Can't it start with Oh, wait. I can't hear. Cole? Because it starts with C. Hmm. The study of the sight word can in this classroom culminates with the word added to the classroom word wall. Sight words can also be learned and practiced through fun songs. Well, we're going to sing a song. And while we sing the song, you're going to hear the word hear in the song. Learning the word hear becomes more meaningful when this song is changed to include the names of the students. Where is Gracie? Where is, Gra is Gracie? The pocket chart for this song is included as one of the classroom's literacy centers, which provides the students with multiple opportunities for practice. In addition to learning the word here, this literacy center allows students practice with directionality, matching voice to print, and reading names of their friends. Making words. Making words lessons are based on the work of Patricia Cunningham. This type of lesson provides students with the opportunity to review and practice letter-sound relationships and sight words that have previously been taught. Using this word weather, we're going to work together to make words, and we're going to start with the word everybody knows, and then add a word or t add a letter or take away a letter to make another word. There are several models of how a making words lesson can be conducted, but the purpose of this activity is to help students explore and learn how letters can be manipulated to form many different words. The first word I'm going to get you to slide down is the word at. Using your letters, pull down the word at. Making words lessons actively involve students because they are asked to create the words by using some type of letter manipulative. Magnetic letters, letter tiles, or cutout letter cards. Using this little part we know at, we're going to make another word. And I want you to slide down the H to make another word. If we put that in Many the making words lessons also include a recording sheet where students can list the words they have created. Many times, a making words lesson leads to a mystery word. The letters of the specific mystery word are what students use to create different words, and then at the end of the lesson, the students work to uncover the word, which can be created using all the letters. Sometimes the word which all of the letters create is identified at the beginning of the lesson. In this example of a making words lesson, notice how the teacher asks students to create words with magnetic letters based on the word weather. Students are able to learn how words within the same word family can be created. So boys and girls, sometimes when you're working with letters and words, you can start with the little word you know and then add a letter or change a letter to make a different word. You saw how the teacher in the first example used the overhead projector to display the words as they were created. The teacher in the next example of a making words lesson writes the words in a list on the whiteboard as they are created. The students in this lesson use letter cards at their desks to create the words, and then the teacher invites a student to create the word on the whiteboard with magnetic letters for all the students to see. Excellent. R at. Nice job. This Making Words lesson concludes with the teacher challenging the students to discover and create the mystery word. Can you build a word for me? And I'll give you a hint. She gives them a clue that the word is a place in the Arctic. Has to do with the Arctic and what we're going to study today. Can you make a new word for me? Tan. Nice job. Let's see if we're right. Are we ready for this? Here's a mystery word, tundra. Did you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good. To review this lesson, the teacher asks the class to read all of the words which were created. 
And our mystery word was? Tundra. Tundra. Nice job. Phonics instruction is an important component of a comprehensive reading program. Strong phonics skills are essential for fluent reading, allowing children to decode effortlessly and focus on comprehension. Students learn sounds and letters best when teachers use explicit and systematic instruction involving teacher modeling and extensive practice before independent application.